I can without shame say that he has changed the lives of millions of engineers and scientists throughout the world. He was an inventor. He was a tinkerer. Francais was, uh, in my view, important for the Hewlett Packard Company as uh, one person that had a broad view on all kinds of uh, activities. He was uh, full of ideas always, you know, and this is why he had for almost any problem, you know, he had a solution of some kind. One of his projects at HP was to take some kind of measuring of oscillation or something, I'm not an engineer, but it was called a computing counter. They were all uh, sort of unhappy that this uh, frequency counter instrument that they were selling was always one off. He had been taking classes at Stanford that were cutting edge, that had something to do with integrated circuits, and they didn't have a word for microprocessor back then, but maybe classes of that nature. So when the question came out, how do we do one more time to get the frequency, and said, oh, I know how to do that. And uh, he became, of course, famous about that, that if you need some smarts in your dumb instruments, call Francais he can put smarts into dumb instruments. That set him up to be chosen for the HP 35, which was his most famous invention. That was the first scientific handheld calculator. When the uh, HP 35 was conceived, nobody thought of anybody else but Francais to do the uh, processor for it. And I can remember uh, he's working on it. The many meetings that uh, he had with other people working on the project. The first prototype was made in beige. It was Mrs. Hewlett uh, who said, oh no, 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 that's not the color. It has to be black. So the pocket calculator was made then in black. HP in their wildest dreams, I believe, were hoping to sell 100,000 of these but they sold 300,000, three times more than their highest hope. They existed before, you know, we had calculators that were doing this, but they were big. But that HP 35 calculator was the first one to fit into a pocket. Hewlett Packard is a product and calculator that was in the 10th in potem pride Hewlett enkrat v laboratorij pa je rekel, da bi mora to spraviti njegov žep. Smo dejansko zmerali žep. Srajčni žep od Hewletta in nekdo je naredil eno maketo, pa smo jo noter dali in ta noter smo mogli narediti vse z živo novo. That was math itself becoming globalized, becoming available for everybody to use. People building bridges or designing the next generation of technology. All the engineers had this calculator. I was on a conference where they were presenting the news. It was a long time ago, and the news was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, and someone was asked, what was that for a long time? It looked like a long time ago. I said, I don't know. He took a calculator and put it in the middle of the man, or in the middle of the man, and he took it and he took it and he took it and he took it. We had a discussion. 
And then from there, he went to the HP-80, which was the financial calculator. What I love about the HP-80 is that was the first high-tech thing that I know of that was used as a tool by non-geeks. I believe was most proud of that. Mr. Hewlett came to France and said, you've done such a good job for engineers and scientists. How about doing something for business? And France immediately saw what's going on. I said, I don't know enough mathematics or business. He said, oh, I'm glad you admit, learn. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't discuss with him. <laughs> and in 1979, he had an idea of an electronic clock, and he shared that idea with Hewlett. And uh, Hewlett said, no, this is not our business, and they declined. And he said, what would happen if I establish a company on my own? If I do not succeed, would you take me back? And Hewlett said, absolutely, go. I support people with ingenuity and, and courage to go on their own. And then France uh, took a job at Trimble Navigation Company, and he was assigned to work on GPS that would enable planes to land blindly in any weather. GPS je do ene mere netočna reč. Ne? To pa lahko poboljšaš s tem, da veš, da je na točko na zemlji, pa pa to točko pa meriš s pomočjo satelitov, pa dobiš eno odstojanje. Ne? In če dej te napake pošleš odmah v letalu, Pa on tudi lahko svojo korigira in s tem bi letalo lahko pristalo v megli. I think as, as I aged and as an adult where I actually started caring, I would ask him, so how are things? And I specifically asked him uh, when he started to work for Trimble. And I remember him saying, I feel really inadequate. I'm not as sharp. There's all these young people, and they have all these energy and ideas, and I'm like the old guy that's barely keeping up. But what is really surprising to me is that I was looking up the internet and found out about his patents and how many patents he has, and I think he has about 25 patents, and 13 of those are in GPS. France was a, a very modest person. If he was as, uh, as demanding uh, as businessman as he was as an engineer, uh, he would probably be quite a millionaire. My dad, I'm not sure if he was the first or one of the very first Slovenian engineers that came to Silicon Valley. And he was sort of the beginning of a lineage of really great Slovenian engineers. I'm sure that brought him joy to see the younger generation succeeding, and I certainly appreciate his role in supporting other people to doing what you love and make a difference to the world. For everything he decided to do that he was motivated to do, very passionate about it, including his love about Slovenia. He was a very proud uh, Slovene, uh, his heart never left his home country. He was equally proud about being a Slovenian-American and very thankful for the opportunities that this country had given him. I saw his career as an adult through the recognition they were getting and he was getting from other people. 
But a lot of careers are measured financially and um, I don't feel like he ever felt like he was successful in that way because you know, he didn't make millions. And that's what happens when you're an inventor. You know, you invent, but other people run with the invention and make it profitable and make money off of it. Well, Ljubljana recognized uh, his achievements, that something important has been uh, done by a Slovene uh, in the United States, in Silicon Valley. And in 2017, he was accepted uh, as an honorary member of IAS, that is the Engineering Academy of Slovenia, acknowledged his accomplishments and accepted him as an honorary member. But just a few days later, June 7th, he died. He was very happy to be acknowledged by Slovenia in the manner that he was. I think he felt that maybe it was his time. I wonder. I wonder. He was a good man. He was a good man. So I talked to some of his colleagues recently, and when I asked them the question of what impact did my dad have on mankind, many of them answered friendship. That for all his achievements, the thing that they choose as the most important impact was friendship that his heart, his willingness to help, his caring, that in reality was his greatest contribution to mankind. Francia Rode was uh, my friend for over 50 years. As a matter of fact, uh, he was my best friend. But I had to share his friendship with many others who also consider him to be their best friend. After you spoke with him, he was one of the friendliest people around. Uh, his uh, smile, uh, his uh, uh, firm handshake, and uh, uh, his uh, embrace on all behavior, you know, changed him into somebody that everybody wanted to be friends with. What comes to mind is when I was at his deathbed and we did our best to tell his friends that he was passing away and do they want to come visit. And he was unconscious so nobody talked to him but instead we had conversations among each other. There were maybe like 10 of us in the room and I realized after I had talked to different people and I knew about different people in the room, that he had encouraged each and every one of us to follow our passions. I think that stands out the most when I think of him. He wasn't perfect. There were so many wonderful things about him, but one thing for sure is he had such a huge heart they enjoyed working with him and how he treated people equally. I know that the things that he did were the foundation of a lot of things we use today. And someday they may be obsolete as things change because everything changes, but his achievements were really um, kind of milestones in, in technology. I like to think about the, what my dad contributed to society as sort of where his fingerprints are. So when we go online to find one of those free mortgage calculators, when we use Google Maps or any kind of GPS in our car, even when we go to a hotel room 
and swipe our card in front of the door and it opens. That has my dad's fingerprints on it. Nakon mogućih kušća na svet za študente v Tujini, kako nekaj ne počne, kako ne vrstniče vse svoje potencijale? To je malo drugač povedal. Meni se zdi, da človek mora imeti en cilj. In mora ta cilj z vsem možnostjo prodreti ali ga začrtati in iskati in tudi, če so težave nastanejo, je treba to naprej delati. Brez cilja se ne da nekaj narediti in brez dela pa še manj.